here's a good problem. What if we have uh, 5 times 2x plus 3, and that's greater than or equal to uh, 2 times x minus 3 plus x? So the first thing you need to say is pretend this is an equal sign, so it's an equality or an equation, right? How would you handle it? We have an x in here, we have an x in here, we have an x in here. So the way you would do it is, since you can't simplify this and you can't simplify this, and this is just kind of by itself, let's distribute the five in here, let's distribute the two in here, and then we're gonna collect all of the like terms, then we'll move every x term to the side, and we'll move all the other terms to the right. So that's what we're gonna do. Over here, five times two x is, five times two is 10, and x comes along for the ride. Five times positive three is 15. And then we have this inequality greater than or equal to like this. And then we have here now two times x is two x. Two times negative three makes negative six like this. And then the plus x is just hanging out. Now because we've done all the distribution, we can now combine this term with this one. So let's do that before we do anything else. 10 x plus 15 on the left greater than or equal to what is two x plus uh, one more x is three x and then we have the minus six. Don't let this sign confuse you. Sometimes students will somehow think that this sign means this is negative and they'll start trying to subtract. I mean, the negative goes with the six. It goes with what's right after. So this is a positive two X, this is a positive X, and when you add them, you get a positive three X. The minus six just kind of comes down because it's still there and we haven't done anything with it. Now what we need to do is take this three X and move it to this side, and we'll take the 15 and move it to this side. So to do the three X, we'll subtract three X. So we'll have 10 X minus three X plus 15 on the left. On the right, we'll have zero once we subtract that guy. So we'll have negative six. So subtract three X here, make zero, subtract three X here, we'll have 10 minus three is seven X plus 15, greater than or equal to six. I'm sorry, negative six, like this. So now how do we get rid of the 15 and move it over here? We have to subtract 15. So on the left, we'll just have seven X by itself. On the right hand side, just to make it clear, we'll write it as negative six minus 15 so we don't get confused. Subtract 15, subtract 15. What is negative six minus 15? It's going to be seven X greater than or equal to negative 21. Basically you add these guys, you get this and the sign is negative because the negatives are there to begin with. And then finally, what we're saying here is <clears throat> the value of x will divide by seven to get it by itself. You have negative 21 divided by seven. So divide by seven, divide by seven. So what do you get is x greater than or equal to negative because negative divided by positive is a negative three. And that's the answer. X is greater than or equal to negative three. That means we find negative three up here. We're saying it can be equal to, so we'll go over here, negative three. It can also be equal to negative three, but we're saying it's greater than or equal to negative three. So it's all values to the right. On and on to positive infinity. And if you stick anything larger than negative three into this inequality, it'll all work out so that this side will be greater than or equal to this side over here. All right. So that's a good problem, but notice it looks very complicated, but it's not because you just have to understand and know that you can distribute these terms in and distribute this term in and then collect everything and then move it and move it and divide. But it's, it's no different than what we've been doing before. It just has a few extra steps. Let's take a look at this one. What if we have five X minus seven plus two, one minus X greater than three x minus 11. So again, same sort of thing. We can't simplify that. We can't simplify that. We can't simplify that. And we can't do anything until we do all of the distribution of all of these terms. So let's do that. And let's see what happens. So five times x is going to be what? Five x. Five times negative seven is negative 35. And we have plus two times one is two. Two times negative x, don't forget that, is negative two x. And then we have a greater than sign, then we have three times x is three x, and three times negative 11 is negative 33. And now we collect terms. On the left hand side we have a five x, and we also have a negative two x. So we have five minus two, which is gonna give me positive three x over here. And then over here we have numbers, so we have negative 35 plus a positive two, so which is the same as two minus 35, which will be written as negative 33 on the left. On the right, we have 3x minus 33. And you look at this, and immediately something strikes you different. This looks 
very foreign and weird because it's very weird to have the exact same thing on the left and exact same thing on the right. When you look at all of our other problems, we get down to some point like this or like this where we have different things on the left and on the right and so we can solve. But this is very different because we look at it and we say, the left hand side, no matter what X is, is always going to be equal to the right hand side no matter what x is, because whatever I put in for x, the same exact thing is on the left and on the right. But this is an inequality. It's saying that this side should actually be bigger than this side. But we know that no matter what we put in for x, the left will be exactly equal to the right. So what is this telling you? When you get down to kind of a weird solution like that, that you don't know exactly what to do, then you need to look and say, well, it's basically not possible. There's no value of x that I can put in here that will make the left-hand side bigger than the right-hand side. It's impossible. If I put 10 in here for the x and put 10 for x, they will be equal. So it will never be larger on the left than on the right. If I put negative numbers, positive numbers, it'll never, neg never work. So what you say is no solution. And another way to write that is kind of a big zero sort of with a slash through it, which means empty set. This means empty set, which means normally when you solve equalities, uh, inequalities, we're, we're writing them as a as a greater than, less than, that's a set of numbers, right? The set of numbers bigger than five, the set of numbers bigger than 10 is the solution of the inequality or whatever. Here we're saying there is no set of numbers that works for this because it's impossible to put a number in for X and the same number in for this and make the left hand bigger than the right hand. It's not possible. Um, and so you have to be on the lookout for that when, when you get kind of weird, kind of down to the weird territory. When you have a, a solution of something that doesn't look quite right and you have to think about it logically. All right, so let's take a look and see what would happen if we had 7x minus 2 times x minus 4 greater than or equal to 6 minus 2 minus x. Same sort of deal. We can distribute the 2 in here, and we'll notice over here, the, the trick here, it's not really a trick, is that the negative really is a negative one. There's an invisible one out here. So we're gonna distribute negative one in times this, negative one in times that. So let's get there by going step by step. Negative two times x is negative two x. Negative two times negative four is positive eight. So negative times negative positive. Then we'll have the greater than or equal to. We'll have the six. Negative one times two is negative two. Negative one times negative x is positive x. So you have to realize that that's an invisible one here in order to be able to multiply them through. Now what do we have here? Seven minus two, or seven x minus two x is five x plus eight, greater than or equal. What do we have here? Six minus two is four plus x. So let's switch colors just to break up the solution a little bit. Now we wanna get the x's by themselves. So what do we have here? We're gonna take this x and we're gonna move it over here. How? by subtracting x. So what we'll have on the left is we will have 5x minus x, which will give us 4x plus eight on the left, and only a four on the right. Make sure you understand, as we go a little farther in algebra, I'll be describing the steps, but not writing everything explicitly out because as you work more complicated problems, you will need to get into the habit of doing that. Subtract x from the right gives you zero. Subtract x from the left gives you 4x and everything else is exactly the same. Let's do the exact same thing here. We're gonna subtract eight here, so we'll just be left with four x here. So we'll subtract eight here, four minus eight. What is four minus eight? It's gonna be negative four, all right? And then the final solution is gonna be x greater than or equal to, we divide by four, so we'll have negative four. We'll divide by the four on the left, four on the right, and we will get x greater than or equal to, what do we have, negative one greater than or equal to negative one. And, and how do you plot this? It's equal to negative one as well, so we'll put a solid circle at negative one, and it's greater than or equal to negative one, so it'll be all values to the right, greater than or equal to negative one. All right, good. Now what we have is, how many more do we have here? Yeah, we can definitely fit it on here. Next problem is, probably the more, most complicated one we'll have, y minus three times two minus four y, uh, less than seven, yeah, that looks like greater than, sorry about that. This should be a seven uh, minus, parentheses, eight y minus nine plus y. Lots and lots of stuff here. 
Uh, and there's lots of ways to do it, honestly, but let's do it my way so you can, you can have your own way of doing it. We need to distribute this guy in. So we'll have, what is negative three times positive two? It's gonna be negative six. What is negative three times, po times negative four? So that's gonna be a positive 12. Don't forget your y comes along for the ride. He's multiplied as well. We'll have negative, or I should say less than. The seven we can't touch yet. Now here, you know, you might see that you can take the eight and you can add it to the, to the one y, giving you nine y, that's fine. I'm just gonna distribute it like this and add it later. So negative invisible one times this will be negative eight y. Negative times negative is positive nine. Negative times positive is negative y, like this. So now I can combine terms on the left, and I can also combine terms on the right. So what is y plus 12y? It's going to be 1 plus 12 is 13. y minus 6 on the left, like this. And then negative 8 and negative 1 is going to give you negative 9y. And then we have the number 7 plus 9 is 16, like this. So we have 13y minus six less than negative nine y plus 16. Now let's switch colors just to break the solution up a little bit. What do we, what do we wanna do now? We wanna get this y term over here. So we're gonna add nine y. So it'd be 13y plus nine y minus six less than, this is now gonna be zero. So we'll just have 16. We add nine y here making zero. We add nine y here. And that is gonna give us 22y minus six less than 16. Now we move the number over by adding six, so we'll have 22y less than, we add six to the right-hand side, what do we get? We get 22, because we add six here, give me zero, we add six here, we get 22, and y will then be less than 22 over 22. Why? Because we divide by the 22, so we have y less than one. And that's the answer, not less than or equal, just less than one. And so what we do is we go find the number one here, we put an open circle and all numbers less than that are in the solution set. So y less than uh, one, like this. All right, we have one more problem. I'm gonna work it on the same board uh, because it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit interesting. Um, I like this problem because it, it, it teaches you something. So let's go and work that one right over here. Four times x plus two minus nine x, like this, greater than or equal to x minus three times two x plus one minus one. Now apologize, it's a little bit compressed, a little bit cramped in there, but we're gonna follow the exact same rules. Let's distribute the four and distribute the negative three in. So what will we have? Four times x is gonna be four x. Four times two is gonna be eight. We'll have negative nine x stays along for the ride, greater than or equal to x stays here. Negative three times two x is negative six x. Negative three times one is negative three. And then we have negative one along for the ride. Now, next step, let's go and simplify everything on the left. Four x minus nine x, so four minus nine is negative five x plus eight, All right? And then greater than or equal to, what do we have on the right? What is x minus six x or one minus six gives you negative five x. What do we have over here? We have um, negative three minus one is negative four, like this, negative four. So we have negative five x plus eight greater than or equal to negative five x plus four. Now what do we do? The next thing we wanna do is we wanna get the x's by itself on the left and move the numbers to the right. So we're gonna add five x on the right. So we'll add it to both sides. So we have negative five x plus five x plus eight on the left. And on the right, we're adding the 5x, so that gives me 0 minus 4, okay? So there we go. So we added 5x, giving me 0. We added 5x here. So the next line, we add these together, negative 5x plus 5x. Again, we get 0. So really all we have is an 8 on the left, and we have a negative 4 on the right. And you stare at this, and it's one of those moments where you're like, wait a minute, this is really weird again. Just like before, we got to something weird that wasn't quite like we're typically used to seeing, and we thought about it, and we said, well, there's no solution for this. Because it was impossible to figure out a value of x that made this side bigger than this side. But then we look at this one, and this is even weirder because we totally don't even have any x's anywhere in the solution. But what are we told? When we get down to it, what, what do we find? Eight is greater than or equal to four. When you get to a weird step like that, you ask yourself, is it true or not? Is eight bigger than or equal to negative four? Yes, eight is always 
greater than or equal to negative four. And there's no values of x listed here any, anywhere. So what this really means is this inequality that you got at the end, it's always true. Always. No matter what value of x, because there really are no x's in the answer, it, it implies that no matter what x you pick, it's always true. So the value of x is all real numbers. All real numbers. So what that means is if you were going to plot it, all real numbers are solutions to this inequality. Everything, the whole number line, all positive numbers, all negative numbers, everything in between. Negative 5, positive 10, negative 347, positive 1 million, negative 1,124, whatever. All numbers work. What does that mean? It means that if you put any value of x in here, no matter what it is, this side will always be larger than that side, and I encourage you to try it. Just pick one, anything. Just stick it in here, and you'll find out that this one's greater than or equal to this. So usually in inequalities, you get down to a point, you get it all, the x is on one side and everything, and you get an inequality. x is bigger than something, or x is less than something. Sometimes you'll get it down, and you'll find out that this is never true. It can never be true. No, no value of x makes this work. So you have no solution. And sometimes you will get down to where there's no x's at all in the answer. And what you get is always true, or sometimes maybe always not true. But in this case, it was always true. That means it doesn't matter the value of x. All values of x work, no matter what they are. And that is kind of why, why we wanted to do these problems. So now you understand the basic ideas of solving inequalities in one variable. Um, we've done enough where I hope you understand how to do this, and now what I want you to do is I want you to stop and I want you to go back and solve these problems yourself with your own paper, and then follow me on to the next lesson where we'll talk about the concept of compound inequalities uh, and understand how to solve more complicated problems in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.